I switched to the iPhone 15 Plus for a week and this is my experience. This video is brought to you by my gorgeous New York City themed wallpaper pack, Skyline. Link in the description and details at the end of the video. Okay, so first up, let's quickly touch on design here. And there's gonna be some overlap from my iPhone 15 videos, so watch that, I recommend it, but I'll be brief with this. The design doesn't look too much different this year, but in hand, it feels a lot different. First up, you get frosted glass, which is a completely new, and honestly, I'd say better texture than the glossy glass we've seen with the iPhone 14 and 13 and 12, and even the 10 and 11 before it. Um, you get rounded edges, which are super comfortable in hand, especially if you're using your phone caseless, um, although they're kind of easily dented, so be careful. I mean, that's just the nature of aluminum. Anyway, Anyway, um, and the colors this year are really subtle and wonderful. Not everybody thinks that, but I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Maybe the yellow is weird, but the rest of them look great. The pink is super cute. The green looks great here. The blue is nice, and the black is really, really nice too. So definitely consider that if you don't want a colorful iPhone. And um, last up, USB-C. You know, it's not a miracle. Apple doesn't deserve a Nobel Peace Prize for putting it in here, but it's super nice for charging and also using USB-C accessories. Moving on to display though, and I really enjoy the iPhone 15's display last week for qualities that I'm about to touch on, but I'm definitely happy to be back up to a plus or max size. That's more so what I'm used to. And I have regular size hands. So although I love the one hand ability with the 6.1 inch displays on the regular Pro and 15, I definitely enjoy how big the keyboard is here with the plus model and obviously Pro Max model if you go that far. So um, nice to have a bigger display here also for media consumption in general. Um, but as for the quality of the display here, this thing gets super bright. I actually have to lower it quite a bit to make it look good on camera. Um, but yeah, it's now at a thousand nits. So it gets super bright outdoors, not quite pro level bright, but super bright, um, bright enough, and it conserves battery life. No always on display, but honestly, I have that turned off on my pro because it drains battery life and I really don't use it. But yeah, I'm super stoked about this display. The brightness honestly makes me forget that there's no pro motion in this display. And yes, as of this point, as of 2023, there probably should be a higher refresh rate in the regular iPhone. But let me remind you, Apple makes the best 60 Hertz displays in their Macs and also their iPads and iPhones, their touch sample sample rate is so low or it's so quick that you don't even notice the refresh rate half the time. And I'm a sucker for ProMotion. I love that. I notice it, but honestly, it really hasn't been a bad experience not having it on the Plus and the 15. Like I could use this just fine. If anything, I'm more keen on having a bright display over a high refresh rate display. Um, and last up, the Dynamic Island um, isn't just a gimmick, isn't just a little tidbit. It's actually a feature. Um, I think it's a much better workaround to a cutout. It's a lot more creative and it actually adds some unique UI elements that you'll enjoy, like just stuff that's happening in the background, like timers and of course music, and it just looks cool while it's working. And before I wrap up my points about display, I wanna give a quick shout out to my Skyline wallpaper pack. I took nine really crispy images of buildings in New York, and I think they look really amazing on your iOS 17 lock screen and home screen. My personal favorite is a picture I took of World Trade Center 7, um, but you know, you be the judge, check it out, link in the video description and probably a pinned comment. Next up though, let's talk about performance in the iPhone 15 Plus. And just like with the 15, it sports an A16 Bionic, which was last year's Pro chip. This has been a trend for the past year. The iPhone 14 had the A15, which was the 13 Pro chip. Chip. Um, long story short, performance is going to be great. I don't even like talking about performance because it's so arbitrary now. Each chip upgrade is marginal. I mean, don't get me wrong, the A17 Pro and the 15 Pro is plenty powerful and has more capabilities. It's closer to the M1 chip, which is very powerful, so laptop level performance in that phone. But with this, it's more than good enough to drive iOS beautifully for the next few years. It's future-proofed. It's also paired with six gigs of RAM, up from four compared to the A15 in the 14 with four gigs of RAM. So you're gonna be running iOS beautifully. You can keep a bunch of apps open in the background, no problem. And you can also play pretty heavy duty games too. Uh, you can game a little better on the 15 Pro, of course, because it's more powerful. But this year with the A16 Pro, or the A16 Bionic, excuse me, over the A15, um, you get increased GPU horsepower, which is always welcome. All right, next up, let's talk about the camera performance with the 15 Plus. And I've been using this system for about two weeks now exclusively because last week I used the 15, so watch that video, I definitely recommend it. But uh, the same stuff stands true here, of course, because the system is identical. You get a brand new, larger 48 megapixel sensor, larger in literal size and also resolution. So the size of the sensor is bigger, which lets in more light, which makes it better for a low light photography and also just gives you even better natural background blur without even using um, you know depth of field tricks or that portrait mode, which is even better now, by the way. Um, 
You also get a 48 megapixel resolution, which you can take full advantage of in One X if you want to shoot Heath Max. Um, so those file sizes are bigger, but you get a really detailed image. But besides that, the standard image quality is now up from 12 to 24. So just standard photos are a lot sharper now, allowing you to crop in for social media or just for your own artistic purposes, or if you want to just see detail in a photo. So that's a big deal with this camera system here. You also get a 2X digital crop here, which was introduced with the 14 Pro. And I really enjoyed that. It also applies to video, but yeah, that gets you 12 megapixel photos, which again was the previous standard and just a tighter crop 48 millimeter virtually. I really enjoy that and use it quite often. And now you have a really decent range of, you know, photography 0.5, one and two, which honestly, I think for some people might, you know, eliminate the iPhone pro models or whatever as an option, because you no longer need a telephoto. I honestly use two X more than three X and five X. So if I really had to use this phone, I really wouldn't have an issue, especially since the two X crop applies to 4k video too, and does not sacrifice resolution whatsoever. And last up, let's talk about the battery life here. I saved the best for last, and I also wrote big battery equals big deal because that is absolutely the case here. Beyond Apple's marketing and beyond the battery tests that you've seen, the best one I've seen is from Mr. Who's the Boss, where he confirmed that this is the best performing iPhone as of late, and I'm happy to confirm that this seems to be true coming from the 14 Pro Max, also coming from using the 15 Pro Max for a week or two when I first got it. Um, this thing chugs along just fine right now. It's at 27%, it is 8.53, so about nine o'clock. I've been using it all day and shooting this video with it since like 10 a.m., so that's a good, you know, nearly 11 hours of just on and off usage, so that's fantastic. And 27% can go a long way, especially with a phone like this. 27% is worth more than what you'd be getting with obviously like a 12 mini or a 13 mini or even a 15 that has a smaller battery here. Um, I had another day where I woke up at like 11 and then went to bed at three, and by the time I went to bed, this was at 15%, so crazy impressive screen on time here. Maybe not quite what you see through Apple's marketing, like 18 hours of video playback and whatever, that's like unrealistic, but I mean, if you want an iPhone that lasts forever, an iPhone that you're not gonna wanna plug in or not gonna have to plug in, you don't need a, a MagSafe power bank, although those are convenient, you don't need one with this, um, you can conveniently or can confidently get through an entire day and then some. Um, so I would recommend going for this phone because the hardware is so suited for long, battery life or lots of screen on time um, and I'd only say that if you are willing to forego some of the pro features like the cameras and the pro motion display but I mean like with how good the hardware is in this phone um, you're not really missing out as much compared to previous years so yeah, I think it's safe to say I've really enjoyed my time with this phone. I kind of think it's the best value iPhone right now because you get you know all that's good with the iPhone 15, but bigger um, pro level features like with this display and the camera setup and the longest lasting battery life in any iPhone I've personally used and Apple advertises it of course. And it just makes sense considering the hardware and the battery size as well. So definitely consider one of these this year. It's a fantastic phone. Also check out my Skyline wallpaper pack linked in the description and probably a pinned comment. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.